Hey, everybody. Danny Bader here, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 10 of our Back to Life podcast. I decided for this um, episode, I'm just going to do a solo episode. We don't have any guests. And I want to use this time to talk about a new book of mine that's coming out, the fourth book. You know, there's, there's a great saying, a Japanese proverb, a lot of wisdom coming out of, of the Japanese culture. And it said, fall down seven times, get up eight. And you've probably heard a similar rendition of that before. And um, I think it's really important for us to understand that. Because most times when life is good for us and we're cruising along, life's good for us and we're cruising along. We don't necessarily need an approach. We don't need the support to move through the difficult times. Um, as many of you know who follow me, kind of a basis for me and all of my work is when I was 28 years of age, I had an electrical accident with a friend of mine, Bruce, that I worked with, and we lowered a ladder into an electric line and we both got about eight to 10,000 volts of electricity. And that, long story short, killed both of us. I was dead for about eight, eight or 10 minutes, according to an eyewitness there, my buddy Stu, who worked on me, Bruce's brother. And uh, I came back to life and Bruce didn't. So it was one of those times in life where tragedy really knocks you upside the head and you have to figure out how to get through it. And, and trust me, it was very, very difficult to figure out how to get through that, even with all the people that I had in my life that were there to help me. You know, I, I lost my faith. I, I felt like God screwed this up. I didn't have any vision for the future. I had a lot of guilt and a lot of blame. So really what, what I've focused on in my work, in my writing, and in my, in my workshops, and my podcast is, how can we support one another? How can I kind of humbly show up and support you? Not that I have all the answers, but I'm always out there trying to find what we need to do, myself included, when the difficult times hit. So I wrote about it in the first book called Back to Life. It was originally published as Back from Heaven's Front Porch, which kind of describes the experience that I had when I crossed over. And I got the rights back, and we added a last chapter about Jake, and it's uh, called Back to Life, The Path of Resilience. The um, second or third book, actually, I wrote a little, a little one in between there called Abraham's Diner. It's about 110 pages, and it's kind of a little business fable about a guy named Patrick who gets really stressed out and overwhelmed with work, and he just lose sight of what's really important. Hey, listen, work's important. Making money is important, and I want you all to do that. The key is just make sure that everything else comes along. You know, that's why I call the five principles that I write about in the first book. And really what my work is based on, I call them jackrabbit. Because of all the animals in the animal kingdom, the jackrabbit has really good vision. Its eyes sit back on its head and rather high up. So it has the ability to see above itself, to the side, behind it. And that's really important for us in life to kind of just always have that big picture, that awareness. We're, we're, we're going to get focused on certain things in life, right? Relationships or work or health. And that's good. You know, put some hyper focus on there and just keep your eyes on the other one. And then the uh, second book that I wrote, I Met Jesus for a Miller Light, one of my, um, my favorite ones. I like them all. Uh, this is a, a story about a young man named Michael. And Michael is a kind of a type A football player, high achiever, goes to a big school, Division One, and then gets drafted into the NFL. And then is, when he's in the NFL, he gets a few concussions, and he gets knocked out. So now he's just trying to figure out, what do I do with my life? Because the goals that he had set, you know, there's sometimes in life we can't control things. And he really couldn't control this. Nobody else was picking him up to play football because they said, hey, he's a great guy, great player, but he keeps getting these concussions, and, and we don't necessarily want to take a chance on him. And then Michael meets this guy. I don't want to give too much of the book away in, in case you haven't read it. They're all available out there on Amazon. Michael meets this guy who drives a um, co convertible Camaro and has an iPhone. And this guy slows him down and gets him to see things a little bit differently. Because the way I look at it is when we're going through those challenging situations, the key for us is what's our perspective about it? How are we seeing this situation? Because how we see it, right, and what we say to ourselves about the situation, about the struggle, that's good. it's not necessarily going to change the brutal facts of the situation. What it does is it changes how we engage with them. I believe it changes our, our feelings, right, and our emotions. And a lot of people go, oh, feelings and emotions. We're not going to talk about that. I firmly believe that we act. We take action from how we feel and what emotional state that we're in. Well, I believe our feelings and our emotional state come from how we're viewing everything. And what we're saying to ourselves, 
about what we're viewing. You know, the Stoic philosophers, I've read some of them, and I get a, a daily email from something called the Daily Stoic. And it was Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius and, and all these guys. I'm sure there were women as well back then, but it seems to be here more about guys. Although I know some very powerful women in this world that, that can deal with some difficult times. My, my sister Trish probably at the top of that list. Um, but they, they, they said you, you've got to expect that tragedy in life. You know, I think it was Seneca that said, you know, I feel sorry for you. I'll paraphrase. I feel sorry for you, those of you that have not experienced tragedy because you know not how strong you will be. So, yeah, let's absolutely enjoy the good times and not walk around doom and gloom looking for bad things to happen. But just understand when they do, we've got the approach, we've, we've got the, you know, the, the wherewithal, the support to deal with that struggle. I think that's really what's needed. And uh, for all of us, and certainly I see the younger generation coming up now, um, you know, there's a lot going on there with social media and comparison and those things. So I've got a fourth book coming out. It should be coming out in October. And I've got the cover here. Now, this is not the book. I just took the cover. We designed the cover, and I, I, I put it on a little a book here. And the title is Taking the Shit Out of the Show, Seven Short Stories of How to Navigate Life's Challenges. So, yes, as soon as I told my mom, she said, Daniel, why do you always have to put the word shit in there? And I said, well, mom, I put an asterisk in there so it doesn't really spell it out. And she just kind of smiled and gave me a hug. And then I, I think I educated her on the book, um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a, by uh, Mark Hansen and uh, uh, Manson. Yeah, I think that's who it was, Mark somebody. Really good book, uh, but sold, I don't know, 10 million copies or something like that. So yeah, taking the shit out of the show. And, and here's, here's the way that I did it. We all know the definition of a shit show. And that's kind of why I used it. Because whenever anybody says to you, I got a shit show going on. You know exactly what it is. It's a time of struggle and uncertainty and pain and, you know, anger and regret and, and all these things, ambiguity, all these things that we're struggling with, right? It's a time of our life that's kind of turned upside down. And it can be with people. It can be with jobs. It can be with our health. It could be with our finances. It can be all of that. So you know what the definition is. So I thought to myself, and, and for me, taking the shit out of the show, that term, is really synonymous. It's a synonym for, for resilience and for persistence, right? When we move through difficult times, we're persistent and we're resilient. Well, when we move through difficult times, we just do that by taking the shit out of the show. Now, here's how it shows up for me. The show is life. The show is life and the show must go on. We've heard that before. Here's the thing about the show. Sometimes it's beautiful and wonderful and sometimes it's beautiful and wonderful with some really painful struggles. So that's the show. Taking the shit out of it is simply how we deal with it. That's what I've come to know at almost 58 years of age is you are going to have the difficult times. Taking the shit out of the show is simply how do I deal with these brutal facts? Because when you engage with them differently, the facts begin to change. It's not magic, sugarcoat, unicorns, and rainbows, right? Things are difficult. How do we engage with them? And you've certainly seen so many stories over the years with that. So short stories, I introduce you to seven characters. There's some other ones in there, but seven main characters that I, uh, I kind of came up with. I would say most of them are based on people that I know, not particular people. I may blend four or five people, six people into one character. But some of the shit shows that I've seen in life and that I've, I've struggled with myself and I've been blessed to do my best to support other people in, I'll uh, introduce you to Alexis, who is going through a brutal divorce. Um, betrayed by her husband. And the main character in the book is Sammy, Samantha Jane Windermere, who I always talk about being played by Jennifer Aniston. We don't know if that'll ever happen, but I'm going to hold on to that vision. So Sammy's from the first book, um, Back to Life. And she now is, is this person that shows up into each of these seven stories to support them. So Alexis is going through a brutal divorce. Nigel is, is a wonderful father, hardworking father with a, a young daughter, Chloe, who's struggling with some challenges. She's about 10, 11 years of age. And tragically, Niall lost, uh, Nigel lost his wife not too long ago. So you, you drop into his story. And then Dylan is a young college student who's just kind of got this secret going on. And he's got a father that really doesn't accept anybody 
unless they think the same way that he does. And uh, yeah, so Dylan has an interesting journey there. Jill was a young mother, um, probably in her 40s, that lost a child. So her and her husband are struggling with some things there. Natalie is a real fiery um, woman. She's probably about 75, I think, as I write it. And she built an, uh, an empire. She built a business. She's got multi, multi millions of dollars in jets and everything else. And Natalie's shit show is that this young mentor that she kind of mentored, right, is, is kind of doing an end around to take over the company. So you'll, you'll probably enjoy Natalie and her shift. Um, Sammy shows up and meets her out in Montecito, California, which is a beautiful place. I do some retreats out there from time to time. And then we've got Jess. Jess is a senior in high school, and she is a highly recruited uh, basketball player. And she has some stress and some anxiety going on. So we'll take you into Jess's world and see how she can shift some of that. And as I said, most of these are not, are not um, based on a real person, although the final one is. And it's a chapter of um, how my brother-in-law, Bobby, who is a very courageous man, ma married to my only sister, Trish, um, has been living with ALS for the past four plus years. And the, the brief chapter that I talk about with him is, is his approach to being strong enough to walk his daughter down the aisle uh, of her wedding when COVID came and everything else. Um, so I am just continually inspired, inspired by him and, and love him and my sister tremendously. So I think you'll enjoy some of his courageous wisdom and his strong, strong faith. So you'll see Alexis, Nigel, Dylan, Jill, Natalie, Bobby, and Jess. And when you look, you think, you go, oh my gosh, Danny, why would I want to read this book? It sounds like such a downer. Well, the book is about struggle. And I guarantee you that you will be inspired at the end of each chapter. And I guarantee you that you will take away some insight, some wisdom, some dialogue, and some tools that you can use um, for yourself, whether you're in a shit show right now, or perhaps one will show up. So one of the tools is this. I coined a, a new word. I don't know if I have the ability to do that, but I guess. I mean, Google was never a word, right? Venmo was never a word. Uh, I don't think Facebook was ever a word. But if you look at the word transition, right? Transition. And transition is just movement from one place to the other. So transition could be your movement from a shit show out of it. So if you put an S in the middle of that word, or an H rather, in the middle of that word, you got T-R-A-N-S, then put an H, transition is what it shows up to be. Kind of a difficult word to say, right? So what Sammy does with some of these people is she does a little word smithing and says, okay, look at this word. She leaves a blank, look back, they put the H, and she says, they say, why, why did you put the shit in the show, in the, in the transition? And she said, see, that's it. I don't put it in, right? We put it in as we deal with it. So a great exercise is she said, let's take the H back out of that word. What is something that you struggling that you're focusing on a word that begins with an H and each one of these characters have an H word that's really their center point of focus that's not serving them well. So they do a little bit of work and, and Sammy gives them some homework and they shift out of that. So I've enjoyed writing the book. I've got my wonderful editor, Sue, working on it. I've got uh, my great cover designer, Christy. I think she did a great job here. So if you're a Florida or Auburn fan, you're going to love this. If you're another fan of college football or basketball, that's okay. Just get past the color scheme and take a look at it. Orange is a good color, right, for inspiration and uh, perseverance and resilience. So the book will be out in October. And uh, we'll certainly do some podcasts around that. If you know anybody who has a podcast that might want to chat with me and bring me on, by all means, go ahead and email me, danny at dannybader.com. But um, Hemingway had a good quote, and he said, the world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. Right? The world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. So I think that's the key of this in life, right? It's okay to get broken. It's okay to get broken. It's going to happen. It's a byproduct of living and being human. It's okay to get broken. It's just not okay to stay broken. So I pray and I trust that this book will offer you some tools and some insight and some wisdom to move you from broken to being fully alive again. So I appreciate your support. Uh, I wish you all the best. God bless and keep an eye out for the book. Take care.